move into our next uh, uh, portion of comedians who just, this is amazing, you guys, you never know this, and maybe I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to because it's going to blow your mind away. Um, Finding Your Funny is a comedy class that lasts about five weeks, and then after that, you do a show. So this next comedian um, has been doing all kinds of performance in her life, and this was her first Finding Your Funny uh, class with me, so we gotta give it that love. Oh, you right. yeah. you're gonna love this girl, she's amazing. So put your hands together for Julia Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. said um, this is a really important uh, night for me because this is the very first time I've ever stood up here and done stand-up comedy so um, you know when I was preparing my set it, it actually occurred to me that losing your comedy virginity which is actually happening right now <laughs> is, is, is really similar to losing your actual virginity I've waited a really really long time for this <laughs> When I first told people I was going to do stand-up comedy, they said, look, it is your first time, so you are going to need to lower your expectations, because it's probably not going to be very good for you. Um, but just keep doing it, because it'll just get better over time. <laughs> but since this is my first time, you know, I was still worried about a few things. I, I, I was worried if it's going to go too long, you know, because then you guys are going to get bored with me, and I'm going to feel super uncomfortable. And if it's too short, you guys are just going to leave feeling... I'm fulfilled. <laughs> I'm also worried a little bit about my technique and frankly whether you guys are going to laugh at me or not because the first time that happened I'd really like it this time if it happened again. Um, <laughs> you know, is this going to be a painful or enjoyable experience? <laughs> but um, I did get some uh, inspiration from others doing this online. Um, that's something that wasn't available to me when I was 17. <laughs> you know, you can actually get a lot of things online. I got my husband online. <laughs> I didn't buy him. I, I met him on Match.com, and right away, he stood out from the rest. He didn't live with his parents. <laughs> he had a profile picture that wasn't from high school. Um, you know, he had this cute British accent, didn't give off that pesky serial killer vibe, but for me, even better, he wasn't another actor. <laughs> and after three dates, ladies, I discovered that Ed, as advertised, he did in fact have a penis that worked. <laughs> Unlike my previous dates, um, oh god, he, he was so much better. There was metrosexual guy, the guy who had more Paul Mitchell hair product in his bathroom than an entire Beverly Hills salon. <laughs> there was very tall Mike. Not just tall Mike, very tall Mike. It was listed on his profile like that. It was really cute, but I mean, you had to get a running start at the end of the night just to get a kiss from him. <laughs> yeah, and then there was, you know, the 40-year-old seeking a very serious relationship with a woman that needed to be between the ages of 18 and 25. <laughs> Hawaiian shirt guy. Boy, he was a doozy. We had a bad date, but then the worst part was I spent about half an hour standing outside the dressing room with him saying things like, hey, baby, just make me look fat. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Hawaiian shirts were made for fat people, so yeah, it does. <laughs> well, anyway, after uh, five years and two gentle ultimatums later, my husband and I were married. Um, and we were, uh, were very different from our profiles than we used to be. But like a typical woman, I expect him to be a little more like his profile while allowing me to experience personal growth. That double standard, I believe, is the mark of a healthy marriage. <laughs> you know how else you know if you've got a good partner? Those little, those little flaws, those little quirks. If you've got a good partner, they'll take it and put a positive marketing spin on it. My husband likes to say, you're a complicated little bug. <laughs> he says that because he really likes me. <laughs> what he really means, what I like to call it, is, is selective OCD, and it tends to flare up around the house, especially in the kitchen. <laughs> it makes me a little crazy. <laughs> I came home the other day from Zumbo to what uh, should have been a clean house, 
because that's the way I left it, <laughs> only to discover. <laughs> Gavin, you're home early. Oh, you're in the kitchen. You're in my kitchen. What are you doing? It's our kitchen. It's okay. No, I know you're cooking dinner at school, but I just cleaned it. <laughs> no, I know this is not a normal response, and I'm, I'm working on myself, so I'm just going to calm it down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I'm upset, I pretend that I'm petting a cat. <laughs> see, I am fine. I'm working on myself. I see that you're cooking chicken. It smells delicious. Oh my god. Is that a plastic spatula sitting on that hot stove? We talked about this. <laughs> All you gotta do is just take that little spatula and put it on that little spoon holder that I bought, and if that one's not there, there's another one that you can put in its place. No, no, it's cool. I'm just gonna go down. I'm gonna step out of the kitchen. Is that a piece of food on the floor? You, you obviously saw it drop there, and you didn't bother to pick it up. Do you not remember our vows? <laughs> <laughs> Love, honor, and obey that one rule that I gave you. You pick your sh shit off the floor! <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do my song again because I'm not feeling so good. Whenever I'm upset, I'm upset like I'm petting a cat. Meow, 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 meow. And the land Siamese, these are all my fluffy. <laughs> I left that little quirk off of my Match.com profile. <laughs> Thank you guys very much.